Hello, 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 everyone. It is Dr. Brandy B. Welcome to the Black Friday 2022 edition. Oh, my goodness. We made it, y'all. We made it through Thanksgiving. Come on in here. Let's talk about it, y'all. I know last week I was missing in action. I had to go to some continuing medical education courses. And when I looked up, it was 1230. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I didn't tell them I was coming, and we are still not done just yet. I had some more appointments, so I missed you all, but I am back. My husband says it's Black Friday. I say yes, but we are going to focus on it Friday, honey, because we need to focus on some stuff. We need to focus, y'all, on some things, and we're going to focus on them right now. Come on in and let me know that you're here. I see Miss Mary Hinkle is watching. Is there anybody else out there who's watching this? Clarify Parker is watching. I hope I said that correctly. Come on in. Let me know that you're here. Say hello. Drop some nuggets this morning, this afternoon. Uh, Miss Mary Hinkle, if you want to let, if you want to join me, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that you're like I am, and you actually press that uh, join the speaker button or option by mistake. But come on in, guys. Come on in. It's such a Beautiful day. Earlier when I looked out, it was drizzling a little bit, but I don't think it's drizzling anymore, at least not where I am. Hello, Miss Parker. Hello, hello. Miss Janetta Parrish, hello. I love your hair, cousin, and I love you, honey. It is so good to see you here for Focus on a Friday. Tell everybody on the east side to come on and join us, guys. Tell them to come on and join us. Miss Vicki Juarez, thank you so much for joining. Who else is joining us? If you're a first-time Viewer on Focus on It Friday, let me know. Miss Mary Hinkle says hello. Auntie Julia says hello, hello, hello. Auntie Julia, did I see you in Atlanta? Did you spend the weekend with my cousin this weekend? I love her so much. I thought about you all yesterday. I hope you all had a good day. Mama Diane Rudolph is in the building. She says hello, Dr. Brandy B. Hello, Mama. Y'all know I love myself some mama, y'all know that. I love all of you all. As a matter of fact, it looks like seven of you all are here. Go ahead and just share the video. Share the video. Let some friends know that you're over here for Focus on It Friday, and we're doing the Black Friday edition, y'all, the Black Friday edition. You know, we have so much to be thankful for, so, so, so very much to be thankful for, and we are going to talk about it. I'm in the car, y'all, but I am actually outside of my home, um, but you know, we've got all these kids here because, you know, they give them a whole week for one meal. On Thursday, they get the whole week. And I have some work going on in my home, and so I just wasn't sure how loud all of that would be. So I just came outside. Plus, I like sunlight, so it worked perfectly for me to just step outside and into the car. We've got Mr. Harold Lurch is watching, stopping by. Hello, hello. One of my Vanderbilt schoolmates, Miss Wanda Myatt, is here. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you all who are here. Uh, we're going to get one more minute, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Hello, Miss Wanda. I hope you and your family had a fantastic holiday. I had a fantastic holiday, as I do all of you all. We're going to get one more minute, and then we'll get started. Um or focus on it Friday, focus on it Friday. So go ahead and tag some friends, let them know that we're here, share the video if you don't mind, um, and then we will get started in less than one minute. We did. How was yours, says Miss Wanda? We had a fantastic day. Um, it was a lot of love, a full house, and, um, and, and we had a good time. So I have no regrets about Thanksgiving. Uh, 2022, it was everything that I needed it to be. I don't know why this air is acting like it didn't want to be air today, um, but that is okay, too. We are going to make it happen. Let me turn that down. All right, all right, all right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm Dr. Brandy B. Oh, Wanda says, same here. Absolutely, lots of love, absolutely. So I'm Dr. Brandy B., your triple board certified pediatrician, adult psychiatrist, child and adolescent psychiatrist. I am your ADHD expert, your um, mommy advocate, everything you need to know about ADHD. I am that person. And I'm also of the best selling book, Shine, Understanding ADHD So Your Child Can Be a Star. And, of course, it wouldn't be Black Friday if I didn't have a special for you. We'll talk about that at the end. But for right now, we want to talk about being thankful despite, being thankful despite. Um, and that means despite whatever, because, Lord have mercy, can we have some things 
that we can come up with that can cause us to not be thankful, can't we? Am I the only person that can find something to complain about? I'm in a mommy group, um, and yesterday somebody said, okay, we're just going to have one post where we're just going to lay all of our complaints right here, whether it be your mother-in-law, whether it be your husband, whether it be your children, whether it be the macaroni and cheese, honey, because apparently people are making macaroni and cheese, and it is not cheesy. Um, I don't like cheese, therefore I don't eat macaroni and cheese, but apparently macaroni and cheese is a hot topic at Thanksgiving, and I did not know this. Apparently it is more important than the turkey, the macaroni and cheese is. So um, I hear some families, you have to sit at the feet of the elders and work your way up to being able to make macaroni and cheese for Thanksgiving. Now apparently you can make macaroni and cheese any other day, but if you're talking about Thanksgiving macaroni and cheese, that's like some honor, honey. I did not know. Is, is macaroni and cheese is that big of a deal in your family? Tell me about that macaroni and cheese. But apparently some people were complaining about macaroni and cheese, and that was a hot topic. And then, you know, some people just said, you know, I could complain about Janelle. She said, yes, it is a big deal around these parts, okay? And so hopefully the macaroni and cheese, if it is a big deal in your family, hopefully the macaroni and cheese was what it needed to be um, in in your families, okay, because macaroni and cheese apparently is making people want to leave the family, and I did not know that because, again, I don't like cheese, and therefore I don't eat macaroni and cheese. Um, but apparently if you, brought, if you bring in some yellow macaroni, uh, you know, macaroni with a hint of cheese, that's grounds for dismissal for the family, at least grounds for dismissal to never be able to cook it again until you can go back and get some lessons. But I don't know. Auntie Judy says, who cooked the mac and cheese? Yes, we need to know who cooked it. I mean, because apparently you need to be like a mac and cheese expert, right? So there were several people that were complaining about their mother-in-laws and husbands, the mac and cheese. Uh, you know, the green bean casserole seems to be another uh, hot topic when it comes to Thanksgiving dinners. And then there are just some families, unfortunately, who just can't get along. And so whether or not they even come together is up for grabs. And then certainly um, there's bound to be some drama. And so, you know, we, we pray for those families. But regardless, in spite of, despite all of that stuff, we have something to be thankful for. So I was thinking about what is it that we have to be thankful for in spite of or despite home health, wealth, heritage, and our mental state, right? So regardless of home, health, wealth, heritage, and our mental state, we still have something for which we can be grateful. When we're thinking about our home, you know, so what I really focused on yesterday, and I want you all to do this, um, Miss Mary Hinkle says not to remember macaroni, ch cheese, but I don't like it. See, I don't like it either. I don't like it either. Now, I love pasta salad. I love pasta, any carbs. I love them, but I don't like cheese. So macaroni and cheese is not you know, something that I have to have. But when we think about home and when we're just thinking about being thankful in spite of or despite, um, despite means, you know, regardless of what's going on, we're going to turn that thing around, right? So um, my auntie brother says mac and cheese and green bean casserole, both delicious, made by Brie. Okay, Cousin Brie, cutting up in the, in, the, in the kitchen. I see you, girl. Go ahead on, Cousin Brie. Um. But what I have, what I chose yesterday, because I woke up kind of in a funk, you know, and I said, I can be mad the rest of Thanksgiving when I have so much for which I can be thankful, or I can choose to say, but, right? So, but is a conjunction that says, I'm going to turn that thing around. So, I woke up, and I've really been like, y'all know, I, like, my work is not hard. I sit down and I listen. I sit so much, I think, that it's actually causing me to have some joint pain, um, especially during the pandemic because I've been working from home. And I still was doing telemedicine, but I was going into the office some, which meant that on occasion I would have to get up, go to the waiting room, get the patient, walk them back. Well, now I just sit for hours and hours and hours and hours. And so I found that I'm having some joint pain um, from all this sitting. It also means that... I can get more uh, jobs, if you will. They're not all jobs, but I could take on more because I didn't have to travel anywhere, right? So I could throw in something on lunch or throw in something right after work. Um, and so that meant that there was time taken away from the time that previously had been devoted to picking up here, picking up there. So it just kind of went from one job to the next to the next to the next to bed. 
um, you know, into caring for my, my young ones. And so it got to the point where I was like, I'm about to blow, because I really like, um, I'm not going to say a spotless house, because we don't live that kind of lifestyle, but I like to at least be able to sit down after doing all of those things and not have to pick up something. And so I said, well, you know what, Lord, I can just continue this day being mad because my house is not absolutely spotless. Or I could say, thank you, Lord, that I have a house that I even need to think about having somebody else to come in and help me with, right? So that's one way to think about it, you know. So when we talk about our homes, if somebody's situation may be, Lord, I don't have the house that I want. We need a bigger house, somebody might be saying, right? But it's so good when we can take things and look at them and say, but I'm glad I have this house because somebody right now doesn't have a house at all, right? They're still in an apartment. Somebody right now is homeless. Um, somebody right now doesn't know if tomorrow or Monday or by next Friday, the house that they're in, they won't be homeless because they are almost in foreclosure. So instead of saying, Lord, this house, this house, this, this house, this, you know, when I was a, a little girl, it was around this time, it was around Christmas time, probably closer to Christmas, because I think we had Christmas gifts under the tree, and my mama used to always talk about our the house where I grew up. She called it a barn, because, I mean, it was a nice house. It was a big house, and a very nice house, but she wanted something else. But we left out, she, my dad, and I, we all I probably went shopping, and um, we left on a um, one of those folk cookers or something. This was before, you know, before this modern-day uh, thing that people are using. But she left that on, and when we got back, our house was still standing, but it was all smoked up. I mean, it was smoked up. Everything from the front of the house is not a small house, but the house and all of its contents were completely smoked. So that Christmas, everybody's gift smelled like smoke, right? They cleaned stuff and dry cleaned stuff, but it still smelled like smoke. And from that moment on, she never called it a barn again. And she was always thankful for the house that we had. And so I want to encourage you to not let a smoked out, burned out, put out situation get you to the point um have to not let those things have to occur before you start expressing gratitude. So that was what I did. I said, Thank you, Lord, that I have a house that's so big that I need some help. Right? Thank you, Lord, that uh things are as they are, right? And that's the whole point because we all now now don't get me wrong, this is a not not about us being complacent. Not about us saying I shouldn't want anything else, but it's about us being grateful for what we have right now. So that's the home part. Now the health part, like I said, my hip has been causing me some problems. But you know what I said? Lord, I can still walk. Thank God I can still been over and clean out my tub, right? So some stuff I can do for myself. I can do what I can, but I have started to, in order to protect my health, realize that I can only do what I can do. And if the house isn't spotless, guess what? I didn't invite anybody over anyway. So if you come, you enter at your own risk because things are not in the place where I would want them to be, and that's my business, as somebody famous said. That's my business. I didn't invite you over here, right? Because if I did, I would have at least cleaned out the spots where I thought you might come. <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong, it's not messy. It just looks like three kids live here, three who are three, six, and seven, and they like to play, right? So toys and work and whatever else, right? Um, but my health and getting some rest is what's most important to me. So on nights when I can go to sleep at 8 or 9 o'clock, you better believe I am finding my way to bed. Um, because we've got to, after being thankful for our home, we've got to make sure that we protect our health. Now, somebody said, but 2022 has been rough for me. I've been out of the house. I've been in the hospital more than I've been in. I got a diagnosis of cancer. I had surgery, and I'm having complications. I cannot stay away from the doctor, but thank God you have insurance. Thank God you're still alive. Thank God the cancer is treatable. All they got to do is remove the organ it's affixed to. Thank God the lymph nodes didn't have what, you know, it didn't spread through the lymph nodes. And even if it did, you know, say thank God for this life I've been given. Thank God that we have methods to take this breath off. I don't need it. Hey, Miss Mary. I don't need this breast. 
take it off, Lord. Thank God for surgeons who go, and if you want some breasts after they take those off, they can reconstruct them sometimes all at the same time, right? So we just have to really look at it and say, I am so thankful to even be in this moment, right? I had a joint replaced, but somebody didn't have insurance, and they need to have theirs replaced. So thank you that I'm able to be here, right? Um, you know, Somebody wants to lay down and sleep good at night, but they can't get a good night's sleep because they got so much on their minds. I just simply have to say, you know what, I'm not folding that load of laundry. I'm going to go to sleep because sleep is more important to me than folding that load of laundry. Oh, well, if they come over here, I didn't invite them anyway. That's why if you ever come to my door and I didn't invite you, you might not come in just because I think you weren't in my neighborhood. Before you got to my neighborhood, you knew you were on your way to my neighborhood, so it ain't no house in the neighborhood, so don't knock on my door. I will leave you out there. That's just me. I'm not being rude. I'm warning you, okay? So we got to be thankful for our home in spite of. We've got to be grateful for our health in spite of. And I hate to say because somebody has it worse because that means that, well, ooh, thank God I ain't as bad as them. And that's not what I want you to think of at all. But I do want you to consider that things definitely are not as bad as they could be. And so whatever the state is that you are right at this moment, make sure that you're being thankful. We all want something to be better, right? But we have to show some gratitude for the point that we are now. So that's home, that's health. Now, well, somebody said, well, Dr. Brandy B., I don't have a house like yours. I don't have insurance. I don't have any money. I don't even have gas in my car right now, such that if you sent me $100 to fill my tank up, I don't even know if I can make it to the gas station. Well, then what I'm going to tell you to do is take that $100, get a friend to take you to the local, um, uh, what's this, auto zone, somewhere, get that red can, go fill it up, tell them you're going to give them $5, okay, even though they live next door and auto zones across the street, it doesn't matter. Give them $5, get the red can, fill up your tank, and you on the go, all right? And you got a job. It's just tough because you had to buy macaroni and cheese because nobody in your family knows how to make it. They're buying that cheesy macaroni and cheese sent you over out of your budget, right? And so the point is we still have to be grateful. We still have to be thankful, even though the money that we know we are due Right? I have a college degree. You're going to pay me with my college degree? No, you just might have to take a job. Maybe the auto zone, when you get there, you see a now hiring sign for a manager. I think somebody at Bucky's posted that um, management at Bucky's for the car wash, I'm going to say was a hundred and something thousand dollars a year. Now, I'm a physician, so. It may not be worth it to me to drive to Leeds for a hundred and some thousand dollars a year. But if you got a good, reliable car and you live in Birmingham or wherever there's a Bucky's close by to you, you might want to check out that management position. You're in management. You manage people. You're smart. You can pick it up. You can figure out how to manage people over at the Bucky's at the car wash. But before we can jump to that, we've got to make sure that we're still being grateful for what we have. Being grateful in the management position that we have where we're making thirty or forty thousand, being responsible as the key holder at McDonald's on the shift manager or whatever it's called, because it's still getting us to the point where we can buy the macaroni and cheese for the family dinner, and then we still have good friends who will help us to get the red can to get the gas to go to the interview at leads to the bookies. We have to be make sure that we are grateful for all those things because you never know when a door may open up. The first uh, moonlight, we call it moonlighting in medicine. The first moonlighting job I had was um, when I was on a resident, when I was a resident, right? And my attending simply said to me, do you want to make some extra money? Do you want to make some extra money? Well, the answer was emphatically yes. I think before he finished the question, I was answering it, right? Um, I always talk about my mentor, Dr. Jacqueline Stewart, simply saying to me, I want you to think about a subspecialty. And from there, I went from general pediatrics to adding on psychiatry, 
right? So we just got to be in the right place at the right time. Um, you you want to be a superstar singer. Don't get it twisted. It's as much about luck and being in the right place as it is about talent because there are plenty of talented folks who are not famous. Do not be fooled. There are about as many. There are more of those, in fact, that there are talented people who are famous. So the point is, no matter what your monetary or wealth status is, use what you got. Save a little bit and be thankful. Make that little bit stretch. I can remember growing up, uh, a childhood friend. Um, she her mom was a single mother, and I never they never she never had anything that anybody else didn't have. Because she used what she had, she made it make sense for her. She worked it. Remember that comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. I'm not as far along as they are. I don't have what they have. Um, her, my husband didn't do what his what her husband does. All of those things get you out of your comfort zone, and they will tempt you into not being grateful for what you have. So yeah, maybe your husband doesn't fold clothes. But he does everything else, and you're a stay-at-home mom, right? So he comes home and he says, okay, you can leave now. That right there is worth this weight in gold. So we have to make sure that even in wealth, even in health, even in our home, that we are thankful and grateful despite. I've got some amens coming through, so absolutely. Then our heritage. Somebody may say, well, my family isn't as big as yours. Well, whoever your family is, be grateful for them. You don't have to have a whole large army full of folks. Somebody might say, well, I just don't have friends. I don't have a friend that can give me $100. But you have a friend that will be the one to pick you up and take you to the auto zone. And so if you got a coworker that says, girl, I just want to bless you, because sometimes I've seen where people say, drop your cash app here, I'm going to give the first five people some money. Right? So if that happens and you've got a friend that says, well, girl, I don't have any money, but I can take you to auto zone with the red can, We've got to be grateful for her. We've got to be grateful for our friends, and we've got to be grateful for our family members. And what I've been, you know, really prayerful about is that, Lord, lead the good friends around. And if I got some friends that ain't so good, you can go remove them. I don't want you to hurt them or kill them, but you can take them away. But I'm grateful for everybody because there's a lesson in it all. Somebody might be saying, well, when we talk about heritage, I can't make a heritage because I don't have any kids. I don't have a husband. I don't have love. I've never known what it is to feel love. If that's something that you really want, then keep praying for it. Keep praying for it. Keep preparing for it. Keep speaking it into existence. And until it happens, be thankful and grateful for the friendship, the family, and the love that you do have. All right? So we talked about being grateful for our homes, despite being grateful for our health, despite being helpful, uh, grateful for our wealth, despite no matter how much or little of it we have, being grateful for our heritage, our friendships, um, our family, despite. And then lastly, we want to talk about our mental state. Um, I think that we take for granted, y'all still with me? I think we take for granted how important it is to be sane. Um, And sometimes we even want to laugh at, condemn, be condescending towards those people who are mentally ill. But what I want to encourage you is to, first of all, be thankful for the mental state you're in, okay, whether it's good or bad in your eyes because it definitely could be worse. But I also want you to understand that sanity is actually a very thin line, right? It's separated from insanity, rather, by a very thin line. And so oftentimes, multiple times a day, we cross over and we come back. And we cross over and we come back. And we cross over. And we come back, and sometimes some people cross over and they don't come back to this side. And so we have to make sure that we're being thankful for our sanity. Oh, Auntie Judy says, spellbound in the subject matter. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, we have to make sure, guys, that we are thankful for our mental state. 
Somebody say, but Dr. Brandy, sometimes I get sad. Jesus wept. He got sad. If you're in a sad situation, that calls for you to be sad. And some of us, honestly, are in some sad situations. Just thinking about some things I mentioned today. Some of us don't have a home, or at least not the home we used to. Some of us don't have good health. Some of us don't have the wealth. We lost a job right before Thanksgiving, or we were told that at the end of the year, our job would no longer be in existence. Some of us found out bad news, sad news about a family member or ourselves. Um, Some of us have children, right? We knew something was not right. And we finally got a diagnosis that we had been avoiding getting in our children. And so we're sad about that. But what I want to encourage you is to be grateful despite. Um, Look at the positives in whatever the situation. Say you got a child with ADHD, well, that child's going to keep you active and young for a very long time. Say you've got a child who's anxious, that child is going to help you to figure out how to plan better than the best event planner because you got to tell them step by step, right? Um, say you've got a child who is psychotic, right? You're going to learn very quickly how some things are worth arguing over and some things are just worth letting go. And saying, I don't see it that way, but I understand that that is how you see it. Um, So we really just have to focus on the good no matter what. There's good in every person. There's good in every situation, right? I don't believe that there are bad people. I believe that there are good people who are either in awful situations or who make awful choices. But inherently, I like to believe that, Everybody is a good person. Um, So I really hope that, you know, for those of you who found yourselves down yesterday or even today, maybe you lost a loved one, uh, maybe you just aren't in the best health yourself. Um, Because life certainly, as my mama says, comes at you fast. It comes at you like a curveball sometimes. You're minding your business, being in people's neighborhood, knocking on their doors, And then the next thing you know, you need that person to be knocking on yours spontaneously, bringing you flowers or a meal or some money or a red can or some macaroni and cheese. We just don't ever know. And so we want to make sure that we're able to say, while things are going at least relatively good, you know what, sure it could be better, but I'm grateful for what it is now. Um, So that when those moments come, you have some gratefulness and some praise and some Thanksgiving stored up that you can reach deep down in and um, bring to the top. So among all the things that I'm grateful for is you, and I tell you all this all the time. You all are the best part of Dr. Brandy B., and you all have been following me now since May of 2020. So we are two and a half years in, and I'm really uh, grateful for you for supporting me and coming every week, for supporting my programs, Um, and just being whatever it is that I need for you to be. So um, as my own Black Friday special, I am going to give you all, I have my book, which uh, is Shine, Understanding ADHD, So Your Child Can Be a Star. You all are familiar with that one. Many of you have it, but many of you may not. And so I am going to offer a buy one, get one half off. So you get two books instead of $40, 430, and I'm also going to um, waive the shipping and handling, okay? The shipping is usually $5. It's going to look like you are still paying for shipping, but that is because the software does not allow me to not charge you shipping. So you will have – it would look like it would be um, $30 plus – Five, so a total of 35 but what I'm going to do is make the books be 25 and then you're going to pay $5 in shipping. I hope that math makes sense. So regardless, out the door, it will only be $30 for you 
um, but it will look like you're still being charged shipping, and that is because I cannot take shipping out on the program. But $30 is all you'll pay. It'll look like the books are 25 and then $5 for shipping. But if you have anyone in your life, speaking of mental health, who has ADHD, who you suspect has ADHD, who behaves like they have ADHD, who the teachers are hinting at might have ADHD, if you're just wondering if they have ADHD, Shine really is a really good book that will walk you through beginning to end what ADHD is, what it is not, what causes it, what does not uh, cause it, um, all the way through getting an IEP. You all know I'm married to a special education, uh, not special education, but an education attorney. So my husband, Fred, does education law. If you did not watch that episode, it's almost two hours long, but please go back and search um, it on my Dr. Brandy B. page, Fred Bowling or attorney or anything like that. Totally worth you watching that if you are trying to figure out how to advocate how to navigate, rather, and advocate for your child by navigating the educational system. Very, very, very good topic. Uh, Wanda Davis says, hey, Dr. Brady B., hello, hello, hello. Dr. Renee Gill, one of my psychiatry friends, if you're in Indianapolis or that area, please make sure you check out Dr. Renee Gill. She is awesome, and she says that that is a great deal. It really is a great deal. Because if you were to buy two books, that would be $40, and then you're shipping a $5. But I'm going to take care of the shipping for you. And so you're going to get two books for the price of um, – I'm sorry, buy one book, get one half. So it will be $30, um, and I'm taking care of the shipping for you as well. Uh, Dr. Andrea, Andrea, Dr. Andrea, Golden Haynes, Dr. Dr. Andrea, if you are in Indianapolis – Fantastic endocrine uh, physician, pediatric endocrine physician. Um, she's the best up there. I, I don't doubt it. Um, and she is a mommy of four boys. Four boys. Yeah, she got a lot of boys. But she's a girly girl. She's got all those boys. Um, Miss Sadie Gresham um, is here. Hello, hello, hello. But Dr. Andrea said, I own this book so good. Thank you so much, Dr. Andrea, for that. Michelle Scott Shorts is watching. Hello, hello, hello. She says, hello, Dr. Brandy B. and everyone. So if you're just coming in, make sure you go back and check out the episode. We just wanted to remind you to be grateful. Life is not perfect. Life is not perfect. Um, and, you know, several pastors will say, lots of boys. You got it right. Four, four boys. They are so handsome, too, so handsome. Um, and so Dr. Dr. Andrea um, has some children with a son, rather, with special needs. But let me tell you, she makes it look, look so easy. And let me tell you about God. He has such a sense of humor. Talk about an anxious friend. Good, good Lord. That child wanted to know everything when it was going to be done. And I remember when she had her son, she said, I think God is, like, playing a choke on me. But um, our children definitely um, – they keep us on our toes, right? If you have a child with any special need, you know that they keep you on your toes. Um, and so we're so grateful for Dr. Andrea and the amazing family that she has. They're good looking, too. Miss Tatiana is here. Hello, Miss Vicky Warriors. Where can I order your book? Yes, yes, yes. That is a great question. Um, and so, guys, if you order one book, it is um, it's $20. If you order two books, it will be a total of 30 Do not be concerned that it's still charging you shipping and handling of $5. The books will look like 25 and then it's going to charge you $5. Um, but you can order, and I will put the code, which will be B-O-G-O, -O, all right, buy one, get one. Um, and it is going to be uh, shop. Shine ADHD book dot shop. I just came up with this off the top of my head, so I'm not going in and set the computer. So give me about 30 minutes to go in there, change the settings. If you order before it takes B O G O, it's just going to charge you $20 for $5 shipping. Don't do that. Give me 30 minutes to go in and get that taken care of. All right. Any other questions, guys? If no other questions, we are going to get out of here. Enjoy your Black Friday. Michelle Scott Short says, may your L's turn into W's. I desire for everyone to not give up on their dreams. I am grateful for you all. Absolutely, absolutely. And actually, if you really think about even if you think about, just try reframing everything. 
if you reframe everything, you'll eventually find that you have so little to complain about. Because, y'all, we are so extremely blessed. We are so extremely blessed. Even your L's oftentimes aren't truly losses. They're learning points, right? I I was trying to tell a niece of mine, and, and an L hurts. It hurts. We, we, we won't try to act like I don't have my own L's, right? Um, but they're, they're learning opportunities. What could I have done better, right? So you didn't get the job, but you weren't prepared for the interview. Next time, be prepared, right? So you didn't get the job, but you and your best friend went together. Next time, don't take anybody on a job interview with you to both of y'all interview for one job. These are learning opportunities, not necessarily losses. They're learning opportunities. The first thing you need to do when something didn't work out the way that you thought it was to say, what can I learn from this? What can I learn from this? I was going through something a a couple of months back, and I just ran across something on Facebook, and it said, don't ask, why is this happening? Instead, ask, what can I learn? And I went into that situation learning as much as I could. And when I came out, I said, oh, my God, thank you so much, Lord, for putting me in this situation. Because had I not been in this situation, I would not have learned all of these things. And as I am getting ready to do bigger things with my business, I needed to know those things. But had it not been for something that really looked like it was evil um, unnecessary and really anger provoking, right? I never would have learned the things that I needed to set me up to go to the next level. So sometimes don't be so mad at that friend. Don't be so mad at your boss. Don't be so mad at your spouse. Look at everything as a learning situation. Try to figure out how can you be improved from it. And in all things, make sure you always give thanks. Um, Dr. Andrew says, what a good message for me today. Love and miss you. You know I love and miss you, too. I'm looking forward to our trip in the spring. Hopefully we can get that pulled off. I need to get with you all about the dates because I don't even know what the dates are. But this year I, I do have a calendar, y'all. My calendar is a mess, y'all. But I've never missed anything, but it is paper. It is paper that I printed off the Internet, just a blank calendar that I write my stuff in. Mama says, good information is always. Tatiana says, yay. I just love y'all. Y'all y'all just come over here. Things happen for a reason. Absolutely, Miss Sadie, things happen for a reason. And um, I've always just been a half full type of girl. You know, there are two people, two types of people in the world, right? They look at an eight-ounce glass and their four ounces of fluid are inside. There's always going to be that one person that's going to say, well, that's half empty. I don't want it. And I'm like, well, girl, that it is half full to me. That means I have four ounces of opportunity to fill it up. If water is already in there, let me see if I can get with somebody who can turn it to wine and fill it to the top. I don't drink, but, hey, I might be able to sell it as wine then. I don't know, right? We just really have to make sure. And I want us, as we go into the end of this year, we have about four or five weeks left, really work on turning those frowns into smiles, those missed opportunities into learning opportunities. As someone said here, those L's into W's, whatever we've got to do. You know, if you're missing a loved one, I am not saying that you should not. You should cry whenever you feel like it. You should be happy whenever you feel like it. You should honor them. We did. We talked about that last um, year, honoring those people that we have lost and that we love. You should definitely, if you feel like crying over a relationship, anything that you lost, we can grieve any loss. Relationships, humans, animals, jobs, um, a car that got totaled. Somebody said they were grieving a car that was totaled because it was paid for, and they didn't have money to get a new one, and they were grieving that. But I want you to put a time limit on it. Put a time limit on it. We talked about now how grief comes and it comes back, and it goes away, and it comes back. But those moments where you just can't even get out of bed, try giving yourself a time limit. I can remember a relationship, a breakup, ugly breakup. I said, you know, you got two weeks to be crying, and then we got to move on because we got stuff to do. We got to finish this residency and get back home. No time to be crying over 
people who apparently were not ready for the level, right, that we wanted them to be on. And thank God that he delivered me from that when I was just a resident. That person had no business going to the next level with me. And so remember that. Things do happen for a reason, and sometimes people, places, and things are only in our lives for a reason, a season, and sometimes a lifetime. And if we're trying to take reason or season people with us to the to a lifetime level, we're going to end up in trouble. So sometimes when that person leaves, let them go. When that situation leaves, let them go. And be thankful in the middle of it, even if you don't know why it's happening to you at that moment. Say, thank you, Jesus, because I know it's going to work out. And if you don't believe in Jesus, that's fine, too. If you believe in cucumbers or whatever else, just say, thank you, cucumber. I know it's going to work out for my good in the end. Cucumbers, was my mama said, bought me some cucumbers for my eyes, y'all. But anyway, oh, if y'all were wondering about Faith, because the last time I was on, Faith came in. Uh, she was supposed to be showing you all her, staple, her sutures under her chin. She had taken them out less than 12 hours after uh, getting them. But all is well now. Her chin is healed. She wanted to be on today, but I told her absolutely not. I'm hiding in the car talking to you all and having fun, but she's doing great. Um, um, Dr. Andrea says, my outfit is gorgeous. Thank you, honey. Thank you, honey. I'm doing what we all did in the pandemic, honey. I got on pajama pants at the bottom. I went and showered, and it was running, cutting it close to noon, so I just had to put some cute on at the top, but I got my... I'm in some fresh pajama pants to put on at the bottom, but I appreciate it. I just love you. Miss Ryan is watching. Miss Levy Bank says hello. All right, y'all, I'm going to get out of here. Don't forget, watch out for the uh, link. I'm going to post the link when I fix the computer site. Tatiana says, I look beautiful. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. You're so kind. Thank you. I'm going to post the link when I update the website, so I'm going to go back in and do that right now. But it will be www.shineadhdbook.shop. The um, the code is going to be buy one, get one, and you'll be able to get two books for the price of one. And I'm taking care of the shipping and handling for you. And I'm actually going to run that all weekend. So this is a great time now to get this book for all your mom friends, your grandmama friends. Hey, get it for yourself, right? Get it for yourself. And um, if you've got a spouse or somebody who just does not understand ADHD, I first of all want to invite you to just have them come and check out some of my shows. Just search whichever one you want and also get the book for them. Very, very, very um, eye-opening. And they're welcome to post questions to me, and I will even, you know, take your questions whenever you get a chance. But y'all have a great weekend. I will see you all next week. Um, we're going to figure out some fun, festive stuff to do uh, to end the year, but I really want you all to work on your mindset. Everything that you do starts up here. Remember, Dr. Brandy B. said she wanted to be a physician in 10th grade, and boy, did that dream come true. So what we speak out of our mouths is the beginning of what we become. And if negativity flows from your mouth, it will fill your life, and it will consume you. It will eat you up. People will not want to be around you. So make sure that you're walking in positivity, that you're living in positivity, that you're speaking in positivity. And right now, the, the whole series is just telling me to pray, so I'm going to just pray real quick. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this moment. I'm going to focus on it Friday. We thank you, Lord, for all of the women men, boys, and girls that are presented and represented are here on the show today. We don't know the details of everybody's experiences, what is going on with everybody right now, but we ask, Lord, that you would heal and bless them in whatever it is that they need uh, at this moment, whether it be health, wealth, whether it be friends, foes, whether it be their home, whether it be mental illness, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would just step in and make it all right, Lord. We know that you're able to do all and everything. And right now, what we're asking for at this moment is that you fill us with positivity and gratefulness so that we may be prepared for all that is to come in our lives from this point and forward. And now we ask that you would keep us safe until we meet each other again next Friday for Focus on It Friday. Be with us and our families. In all things we ask and we pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. That is it. That is it. If y'all need me, just holler at me, but I'm going to go in here. 
and I am going to um, get the code, and then you will be free to shop. Great Christmas gift. Wrap it up, and it will be yours to give to a friend. I enjoyed you as well, Auntie Julia. Everybody is a minute, a minute, a minute. Auntie Wanda, I hope everybody had a great weekend, a great holiday. Don't forget that macaroni and cheese. If they mess up the macaroni and cheese, we're going to forgive them, and we're going to tell them next year, "Uh uh-uh, baby, you cannot do the macaroni and cheese. We're going to either cater it out, or we're going to give you some tutorials. We got a whole year for them to figure out their macaroni and cheese. All right, guys, I love you all. There is absolutely nothing you can do about it. You all are the best fans in the land, and I will see you all next week. Bye.